Hello, I'm Dr. Jan Kuppets. I'm the Chief Geotechnical Engineer and today we want to take the opportunity to actually provide further information on what's happening in the Port Hills. And I'm John Scott, Project Manager with CERA for the Port Hills. Now, one of the things we wanted to explain in more detail and actually later on we will go to the uh, Hills is what the 3D study does and how we actually use it to make zoning decisions. Now, in addition to the um, 3D study, um, Christchurch commissioned a study with GNS, which John can talk about. Um, yes, Christchurch City Council have commissioned three studies uh, related to the Port Hills, one related to Boulder Fall, another to uh, cliff collapse, and a third one um, as a global study on life risk. Thank you, John. Now, Sierra commissioned the 3D study with GeoVert to complement the three studies undertaken by uh, GNS and is essentially looking on the Port Hill from a slightly different perspective. What we're trying to do is to determine where the rocks go in future events and looking back where the rocks actually went to. So how far is the furthest extent a rock could fall and that inform us what actually is at risk and what isn't. Now, to that, we actually use a very complex analytical model, which is run by the University of Milan, and that actually predicts where rock will, rocks will go and which um, path and corridor they actually will follow in the terrain. Once the study is actually in, we will then use a 2D analysis, which is actually looking much more in detail where the rocks actually follow which terrain they go and how high they bounce and what energies they have. I'll show more examples later on in the field. Okay, the GNS studies um, uh, will be used together with uh, the GeoVert three-dimensional study to be complementary and the information in aggregate will be used to assess um, where protection measures could be implemented. John, just to um a bit more detailed explanation. Now, as far as I understand it, the GNS study is about life risk. So it looks at actually a risk exposure. And the other thing which um, has been mentioned in the past is the ground through thing. So could you explain about the life safety aspect of these studies and how ground through thing is actually undertaken when the studies? Okay, the, um, the, the GNS reports, um, the end result of those will be contours of life risk and um, that information uh, is, has been developed in a, in a simplified two-dimensional model um, uh, th and fortunately the Port Hills is a three-dimensional landscape and so uh, the a ground truthing study has been undertaken to, um, to, to refine the life risk contour work so to pick up the, the contours of the hills. For example uh, the, uh, the valley areas, the boulders will tend to run out further. On the ridge lines, the boulders will tend to fall into the valleys. So the life risk uh, contours, if you like, will be closer to the rockfall sources. So the potential implementation of protective works would be actually to reduce the risk exposure. Not to remove the risk, but actually reduce it to an acceptable level. That's correct. Um, in essence, the rockfall protection could comprise um, two aspects, uh, a, a fence or a bund, um, and depending on the, the energy levels of, predicted engine energy levels of the boulders coming down will dictate which um, is the best protection measure to be adopted in each instance. And I understand there is also the option of at source treatment. So rather than the fence or the bund, if there's one individual outcrop, we could actually treat this one to actually remove the hazard in, in its totality. That's correct, and uh, the, the, the ideal is to capture um, the boulders before they move. In some instances, or many instances, it's not possible to do that, and so you have to catch them uh, when they're at a suitable energy level towards the end of their trajectory. And that's something very similar to what is happening with the 3D study. So, as John said, the 3D study is complementary to GNS study from Christchurch City Council. And 
or both studies have very similar input parameters and they draw on very simple, uh, similar inputs. So like the rockfall data which was collected by the geotechnical engineers over the past 12 months is actually feeding in both of these studies, same as the terrain, the topography, the LiDAR information. So all this information right now feeds in these studies. Similar to the GNS study, the 3D study, where um, CERA will actually look at individual properties but also suburb wide and will actually determine what actually is exposed from rockfall. We're looking at individual properties but also we're looking at lifelines and that could be um, service corridors for power, water but roading as well. So all this will be actually considered very similarly to the GNS study. Yeah, and I think it's worth um, expanding on what the particular issues are in the Port Hills. Perhaps you could do that for us? Sure, John. Um, in the white zone, we have three particular issues, and uh, we actually need to um, treat all three separately. So we have landsliding, we have cliff collapse, and we have rockfall. Now, each one of them will need a different scientific input to actually determine what actually the problem is and how we're actually going to treat it. Now, we talked about the ground through thing, but it actually relates to rockfall, but equally so it relates to cliff collapse. So what we have seen on the cliffs, very similar to rockfall, there's damage, we have cracking, we actually have to understand from borehole drilling and the general setup and makeup of the hills, what actually is the exposure in the future. Now, we don't necessarily look in the next one or two years, we're looking in the next 50 to 100 years. So understand how the cliffs fail, how the cracking progresses and what actually is going to be at risk both at the cliff top and the cliff bottom. And obviously we have houses exposed, we have school exposed and we have lifelines like the road exposed. So all these things need to be uh, looked specifically. Landsliding, uh, we need to actually understand what triggers the landslides, how much they move per event or per trigger and actually could they go further on than they do. At the moment we understand that the landslides are seismically triggered, so when it shakes they move and then there's very little movement afterwards. Conversely to that, we know that rockfall, uh, sorry, landslide is being triggered by rainfall. Now we had an exceptionally uh, dry winter last year, so we're still waiting and actually observing and monitoring you know, to understand how some of these larger landslides actually do behave. So. These three issues, which is the landslide, rockfall and cliff collapse, are all wide zone issues that we actually seek resolution as soon as we can. Now what I suggest to do is right now go to the hills and look at some examples of rockfall and cliff collapse. We are now in the location on the Port Hills to actually show by way of examples where the GNS uh, ground through tank and the 3D models actually deliver and how they work. John, do you want to talk about the GNS study? Okay, the Geological and Nuclear Science Study um, developed a simplified uh, two-dimensional model that um, provided a, uh, an opportunity to very quickly understand how far the boulders may run out. However, because of the two-dimensional nature of it, it doesn't necessarily reflect the local ground conditions. Now, this area here is a prime example where when picking up through the ground through thing, um, the flat terrain, um, in effect limited the, uh, the run out of the boulders and because of that work we were able to move the containers from one side of the road to the other uh, and um, identifying where the higher hazard areas are. So John, if I can actually drill on this one, the way I understand it works, we're actually using a linear measurement where we're looking at an angle from the position we are at up towards the bottom of the toe or where the rocks actually come from, and that gives us the linear relationship, how far rocks potentially could come, and the ground through thing exercise then actually determines much more specifically, considering the topography, the, the vegetation, the type of nature of the soils, how rocks bounce, using essentially the experience from the geotechnical engineers, but also doing some office uh, work, numerical studies, to actually delineate whether the line in the sand is over here or much closer to the hills or much further out. What we have seen over here is essentially that um, at this particular location the containers were moved on the other side of the road because that was actually identified that the rocks will predominantly land up on the flat bit once actually falling off the hills rather than actually rolling further out.
So the direct result out of ground truthing over here is the containers were shifted. But equally so, Section 45 notices by the Sierra Act were placed on the containers because we believed that behind the containers is a much more elevated hazard than um, on the other side of the containers. Now, John mentioned the GNS study and the ground through thing. Naturally, Sierra um, 3D study delivers very similar results. So what we actually were doing in this particular location, confirm, first of all, how far the rocks can roll out, what energies they have and how high the bounds. And again, for this one, we confirm that the um, GNS ground through thing actually uh, confirms with reality and with the boulders we actually observed on the ground. And again, we agreed that the container should actually be moved close towards the hill to actually open up the road and allow residents to return to some of the houses. Section 45 notices from the Sierra Act were placed on container locations across the Port Hills where we believe that behind the containers is a much elevated, less risk for um, rockfall or cliff collapse. So Section 45 notices prohibit access to an area Aaron a property. Many people actually have come to Sierra and ask why the containers are about a meter apart. Now there are a number of reasons. Uh, predominantly the fact is that geotechnical engineers or people who have legitimate reasons to be behind them and exposing themselves to the hazard can actually do so. But equally so we will need to get very quickly out of the places behind the containers. So every 20 or 40 feet, we actually have an emergency route for us. So this area actually between the container acts as a safe haven for geotechnical engineers working in the back. Um, in some areas where the access actually is not necessary, um, specific mesh has been actually placed between the container locations to prevent debris from inundating the road. I just would like to demonstrate um, the need actually for both Section 45 notices preventing access behind these containers and fairly obvious warning signs. Um, the containers behind me were just hit numerous times by rocks that in size are very typical for what we actually expect from the uh, Port Hills. So follow me around and I'll show you what a rock can do when it actually does hit a container and what the container actually perform in terms of protecting, uh, protection. Boulders this size, unfortunately not the reoccurrence, but they actually number of them which we actually found in the Port Hills. And I would like to show you what happens if one of those ones isn't stopped by the car park, but actually continues towards the containers, which are put in here specifically to protect the public. During the um, works on the cliff face behind me, a couple of boulders like the ones behind me and next to me, were dislodged and deliberately discharged against these containers. And as you can see, the containers crumbled, got penetrated, but actually performed its function very, very well. The bottom row of containers have 20 tons surcharge in them, generally in form of ballast, which could be concrete or sand, and the top containers are fixed to the bottom ones, so they can actually topple over. And in this instance, where we know that the energies can be very high, we provided with um, cables to hold them back. And as I mentioned previously, some of them have gaps, but where we are concerned that debris could penetrate, we actually provided mesh that actually stops the debris.